What I've got here is a 6,400 watt array. It's 16 400 watt panels. And I'm gonna upgrade it to an 8,000 watt array by adding two panels on each end. In order to do that, I gotta access that two by 12 that's being blocked by that tree. So we're gonna cut down that tree to where I can get access to that two by 12 that's sticking out about two feet on each end. And after we do that, we're gonna get a two by eight and we're gonna run it from the two by 12s and that's gonna be our beam that holds up the panels. Got another beam up. I actually stopped planning and just started working. And it's amazing how much I got done in one day when I stopped thinking about it and just did it. So that's that. The two by eight is up. Now we're putting the panels up using a Harbor Freight sheetrock hoist because it's 11 foot on one side, the high side, and nine foot on the low side. So it's a little tricky to get these 70 pound panels up that high. And once we get that all the way on top, we're gonna bolt it down and then we're gonna go for the next panel. Also on that two by put a joist tape on top of it to prevent rotting. Got that panel up and now we're gonna go over to the other side, put the other two by eight up, put joist tape on top of that to prevent rotting. That two by eight's installed, ready for panels. We're gonna go back and put the second panel in on the other side. Here's how I installed the two by eights. I notched them out so they would sit on the two by twelves. I use Simpson strong ties to attach as a 90, bolted it in, spray painted the back black. So that panel is installed on one side. I just used uh, Simpson strong tie uh, brackets. They're like 84 cents at Home Depot. Spray painted in black and then uh, just bolted it right into the frame on one side. The other side, I'm gonna do the same. Uh, just a real cheap way to connect these panels versus uh, the railing system. I'm sure the railing system is easier, but uh, you know, it's only uh, like four bucks to attach each panel using the uh, Simpson strong tie bracket. All right, here's the other side. I got the two panels installed. They're bolted down on one side, not the other yet. Um, it is an overhand cam lever and I do have to adjust the panels because uh, one of the panels is out like a half inch too far. But it's all hooked up. And uh, yeah, I hooked them up at nighttime. You don't want to connect these things during day because there's a you know, 250 volt DC uh, running through it. And it'll just arc as you try to unplug it and weld the terminal. So it was all unhooked at uh, last night. And then uh, got them hooked up in series. So that's 10, the whole tr structure is 10 panels on that string, goes the inverter, so it goes five panels in series, five more panels in series, and then those hooked in parallel to double the amperage to, uh, it's around 17, 18 amps. Because I'm running the, uh, the watts 24-7, uh, 6548 uh, MPPT and its max input is only 250 volts. It's not like the, um, um, the EX or the EU6000 uh, from Signature Solar, where it could take 500. Mine can only take 250, but I could double the amperage up to like 18. So it still takes 8,000 watts. You just gotta configure it differently. This is my next string. It goes five panels, five more panels, in series and then those both connected to parallel at the box and then ran back to the inverters so as of right now this thing is an 8,000 watt powerhouse and uh, gonna be building another one uh, over here so these five panels are coming down I'm gonna do a video on this and on how to make it 
uh, pretty much can do the same thing. I'm gonna go the uh, six by six posts, the two by 12 as the main beam, and then two by eights for the panels. And oh, this one's all waterproof too. Uh, so in between the two, uh, the panels on the two by eights, there's actually a, a, um, a, it was a 90 flashing. I believe it was two inch flashing or one inch flashing 90. I flattened it out to where it was like still had a V in it to where the water would, you know, run the channel. And that's sitting in between each panel. So any water that goes in between the, uh, uh, the crack of the panels gets routed out to the end through the little gutter that I made. There's a picture of the gutter. Kind of see it on this one. Oops. That's the flashing that it's sitting on. That one's bent up a little bit, but it's still in a downward. So water flows out. And then there was water in between the panel gaps, but uh, I went up there and cocked the center of that. So now there's no leakage in the center. All the water comes out. The structure is completely waterproof. So it worked out really well. Um, I'm going to build the same thing over here. This is going to come down. This is a Costco uh, structure, the 10 by 20 um, canopy, like car canopy. Very weak. It's only made for like, like a 40 pound roof, you know, a tarp roof. And I've got a shitload of weight on that with panels. It's been out for a couple of years. It's probably won't last too much longer, but I had to support it through X brace with the straps. And I even got two by sixes just to keep it from collapsing because it would just collapse with all that weight. So I just bolted in two by sixes to make it a little more secure. So it would hold this, but um, this structure is coming down and I'll be building another 20 panel um, structure back here for the other inverter to hook up to. Um, and just in case anyone's wondering, like this is plenty of power for a house. This one alone, it's plenty of power. But if you are trying to run an electric vehicle, uh, you are going to need a lot more power. So if you're running a Tesla, you know, if it's getting, um, you know, three miles, you know, out of a kilowatt, is pretty much the, what they're rated at. Uh, you're gonna need more power. You know, this is plenty for a house and it'll run the central AC, no problem. Of course, side note, you do have to hook up a soft start. Um, but if you have an electric car, you are going to still be short power. And that's why I'm building something else because this structure right here will make about 50 kilowatts a day, maybe 60 kilowatts a day. And uh, that could be using the car. And plus more is better. I mean, if you're, I'm talking summer terms, but if you're gonna look at winter terms, you know, this, this structure might, you know, it's producing anywhere from 50 to 60 kilowatts a day, but in winter, you know, it could be six, it could be 10 kilowatts, which is not gonna be enough. You're still gonna have to pull from PG&E. So if it's safe, it pulled six, I got this guy pulling six, at least, you know, 12, it helps out. Uh, so it, it could be off grid um, with double the amount of, you know, panels if I put this up. But uh, this whole system is off grid, but when it needs power, it does pull from PG&E for excess power that it needs never feeds back so uh, and that's really the only way to go because you know once you go with the on grid where you're feeding back and you got to deal with all the permits you know and then you got to put the panels on your roof you need permits for that but if you just put the panels on the structure you know a ground mount kind of like my large ground mount here <laughs> that's my ground mount um no permits needed so if anyone's thinking of solar, I would highly suggest do it yourself off grid system. And it's not truly an off grid because it does. If you ever run out, the inverters are hooked up to the grid. And if you run out of battery, you run out of power, it just pulls from 
PG&E and supplies and just passes right through the inverter and supplies your house. And it does it seamlessly. You don't even got to know that it's doing it. It just, it just does it. So that's the setup. The next video is starting to going to start to be to build out uh, this next structure. It'll be more of a step-by-step -step on how to build one of those things. But that's it for now.